Hello everybody, it's Kevin here again, and this week we're going to be going over some unit testing. So, why unit testing? Why do we want to unit test? Well, our applications may be running in healthcare, they may be running in finance, and we don't want users to send in the wrong data or malicious data and have that break our program. Uh, this could also this could this could lead to all kinds of issues, of course. So we could run into issues where uh, employees can't do their job, and if it's imperative that they are able to do their job with your program, then it's it's it's, it's an obvious issue right there. Uh, another problem is, for example, if your program or application is not producing the right output, or if it's it's not uh, yielding the correct results given proper or improper input that's obviously going to be an issue as well. We're talking about people's money and perhaps even people's health care on the line, depending on what you're working on. Of course, if you're you know, working on games or if you're working on a small website, it's not going to be quite as imperative, but when it comes to big corporations and health care and large companies, it's a, lot more, it's a lot more important. So this is likely something that you will see if you work with a large project. So to begin we have to select so so what what are we actually testing that's the first thing you gotta ask yourself what do we want to test so unit testing can it can help take the the place of an individual that would go and test the application manually of course that's going to be important you still are likely going to want to have one person to take care of that but now that can be another role added to an existing job so if you're a developer well now you're going to be also testing your code whereas before you may have had uh, a group of testers that just tested the program or application. So in this example, uh, it's JWT Authentication Manager. This is something that we're definitely going to want to test. So to start off, I'm going to start running this application. And it looks like it started up just fine. So we got to look at the credentials here. So test and password. Because prior to writing your test, you want to ensure that your program is actually running properly for obvious reasons. Test and password. If we take a look, we got an access token. This is good. If we enter the wrong password though, we should get an unauthorized with no response body, with just null. And the reason that I know it's null is because right here, there's no users with those credentials, return null. So this is something that we would expect to see. If we send in the wrong credentials, we would expect it to be null. And the test cases are basically plain English it's you're gonna expect or not expect certain things so what we can do right away is we can generate some tests here so just right click and select create unit tests lot just make sure that all this stuff is left default select OK once this is done you might try to run your tests so this is gonna take a little bit and then it's gonna Perfect, just like that. So you might want you might want to run your test right away, and it'll build your project. It'll you'll expect your tests to be up here, but in in some cases they will be like right here. The the test did show up. So if you run into a situation where these tests do not show up, go back to where you made the test and ensure or not even here you would actually go to the actual test itself and you would go and hit show in test explorer if it doesn't show up just right click and select show in test explorer it's one one thing to keep in mind if you're not seeing any tests but in this case we are seeing the tests we go to test explorer we are seeing one test and as we can tell the assert dot fail failed so this didn't go through but this is this is the default test so what we can do is we can get rid of this we can start off by creating some stuff here so right away we're gonna to want to create a JWT authentication manager so JWT authentication manager I'm just gonna call it manager and we have to pass in a key so fake key not legit one 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 
there that should be long enough so now that this is created we also are going to want to create a user we're going to want to mimic what we're actually doing so in this case here we're creating a user and we're passing in the user's properties now you of course could pass in some strings to this authenticate uh, function but it's it's gonna it's gonna end up being the same thing but I like to just mimic exactly what I'm doing that way it's easier to spot any differences or any errors anything that might be problematic so user user we have to add this reference of course so we're just gonna fill this user object now that this user object is created we have to assign what this authenticate function returns to a variable so variable uh, return just ret and we're gonna authenticate the user with we're gonna pass in the username and the password what we're gonna do then is we're gonna assert something assert dot Okay, so what, what are we going to assert? Are these the correct credentials or are they not the correct, the correct credentials? Of course, they're not the correct credentials. So what we have to do here is we have to assert that it is, that it's null. Because since these are not the, cor uh, the correct credentials, if we would go here, we would expect it to be null. So, is null, a return, save this, and let's try running these tests. and it looks good it it succeeded because this returned null and it is null now if we do something else here if we are working with our tests and we expect something that we're not supposed to expect so we expect this to be not null is not null so let's say that we did pass in the correct user credentials and the correct make sure that I got it properly the correct key if we did pass in all the right stuff we would expect it to not be null. As a matter of fact, we would actually expect a token of a set length. So we can expect certain things. So we can expect it to, first off, be not null. We can expect it to be of a certain length uh, or a certain condition. So assert is true. We could do like, for example, assert dot is true. And if we were to convert like the return into, or yeah, convert it into an, uh, an array of characters and count it. So how many elements are in that array? Just ensure that that number is equal to, uh, say, 64 characters. Just a random arbitrary number. And if that's not true, then it's going to throw that error. So let's try this here. See what happens. Try running all of our tests. We, we expect it to be not null. Well, this is going to fail. Why? Because we're expecting it to not be null but it's null so it's it's very straightforward it's it really is as simple as it gets you're just expecting and asserting certain things with your test cases so you can continue adding more functions here we can add more test methods uh, and they can do different things so for example if our JWT authentication manager had get rid of this screen here if our JWT authentication manager had some other items here, we could test that that's true. We could also test if this was a public dictionary, we could test to see if some of the default uh, users are in there. We can, we can test that in our test cases. And you might be thinking, oh, well, I'm not going to get rid of these things. I'm going to ensure that certain things are in here and I'm not going to touch um, the things that I'm not, supposed to, uh, I'm, not, I'm not supposed to touch. And of course, this is true. We, we all expect these things to happen now when you're working with multiple people and say for example somebody is just about to quit or anything happens people can go and start making modifications to your stuff and if you have continuous integration enabled where your stuff builds automatically a uh, common thing to do is in those continuous integration uh, pipelines you can add those tests so it'll run those that it'll run that test project first and if any of those tests fail, well, then of course we know that uh, we know that something's wrong. We can go back and look, and if you have your 
uh, merge with master for example M merge with the master branch uh, if you have a requirement that all the tests pass well now they can't merge with master until all the tests pass so it really limits the amount of harm that can be done by by someone with malicious intent so that really is the basics of testing it's of course much more it can be much more complicated than this it can be as simple as this I mean everything can just every one of these test method test methods can be just like this you declare an object you uh, fill the object and then you execute that function or method uh, you assign the value to something or you could actually even run it in here so you could actually do for example manager dot authenticate and that would work just fine as well so just depends on how far you want to take it if you want to improve your read uh, the readability of your code or if you want to have as little code as possible completely up to you but it's this is just the basics of it so this is for dotnet .NET core 6.0 it'll probably work with older versions uh, thanks for watching if you have any questions please reach out